Yes, okay, other, other senators, I think Senator Wykowski and Senator McGuire, others of this panel, and we'll have the next panel next, okay? So the chair has talked about, I mean, we focused on uh, gas tax revenues and the excise tax and the concept of trying to smooth out that revenue stream. I would like us to contemplate perhaps something smoother or the smoothest of, of revenue sources that uh, are not currently come from the step. And I would uh, ask us to revisit the vehicle license um, fee that has became a gas tax by magic by a previous governor and uh, vehicle miles travel. We have a study that's going on right now to look at that. And in this concept of, as we move towards the governor's goal of having 1.5 million electric vehicles on the road and those people, those vehicles carrying weight and, and having an effect on the surface, what are your collective ideas of those smoothers or smoothing agents in a, in a revenue package? I, th I think we're, we're, we're open and want to help you reach a conclusion on any of these packages. I know that right now on the road charge, which the road charge almost by definition uh, handles the electric vehicle inequity in terms of paying for the maintenance of the system that right now is covered through only by gas tax. So some kind of vehicle registration in lieu of gas tax or a road charge if we get there. The road charge, albeit is only a study, we're looking at the feasibility. The CTC can comment on it in more detail. Uh, it, and it's also a longer term solution. It's several years off. And in the meantime, we still have this three quarters of a billion dollar stip problem in the next five years. So I, I think we need to have a short term and a long term conversation at the same time, which is confusing and difficult. Uh, we, but in terms of smoothing and adding those cars, we, that's part of why our system is broken. Our system is changing and we have a 1960s you know, funding system and we're, we've got a lot of 21st century technology. Anyone else in the cities? I, I would just say, Senator, you know, there, we, we self help counties think that, you know, all, all of the ideas should be on the table. We wouldn't presume to sit here and tell any of you how to best represent your constituencies. We're here to provide information, to provide uh, an analysis, and certainly have discussions about what some returns may be if you were to go down that road. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we encourage uh, open dialogue with everything on the table and then are here to support you so that you can best represent your constituencies and make that tough decision. <laughs> Thank you. Senator McGuire. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair, and to the committee and to our presenters. Thank you very much. Uh, just a few comments, Mr. Chair, if that works. Um, uh, Coming off of a Board of Supervisors in the County of Sonoma, uh, very familiar with how ugly the road situation is. Uh, the County of Sonoma is not only beautiful, but we have among the worst roads in the state of California, um, and also among uh, the most miles per capita. And the way the gas tax is structured um, hurts rural and suburban counties, quite frankly, uh, as we have 1,900 miles worth of roads, and uh, we receive about 19 million. Flip that, less than 400 miles of roads in the unincorporated Orange County, and they are over 150 million. Um, so there are some challenges there, and uh, want to just focus on that for a second, uh, Mr. Chair, but really quickly, we are at that crisis point, uh, and it really seems that when state and federal government reacts is when we hit the crisis point. Um, and the reason why we are continuing to focus in on the 1960s is because we haven't had the courage to be able to have the tough conversation. And that's additional revenue and restructuring. And there are um, a lot of entitled organizations and individuals in place uh, when it comes to transportation funding in this state. That's the, my opinion, the bottom line. And despite coming from a self-help county, which the county of Sonoma is a self-help county, we still have the worst damn roads in the state. And we've invested tens of millions of dollars over the last four years in our roads and we've been able to move the radar by a blip. And the only reason we've been able to do that is because our economy is finally starting to turn around. But when we take a look at self-help counties, they're suburban or urban. You're never gonna get a Lake County, which is the poorest county uh, in the state, and one of the poorest counties in the country, 
to be able to move towards being a self-help county or Trinity County that has less than 15,000 people in extreme poverty or Del Norte County. And we take a look at the needs in rural California, you've had friggin 101 falling into the Pacific Ocean that connects Oregon and California, the last chance grade for decades now. And we haven't done a damn thing about it. And what I would hope that we can all get together as they've done at the federal government, Democrats and Republicans alike, and actually strike a deal this year. Because uh, I think we owe it to commuters in this state. It's one of the best economic development tools that we have, both short term of focusing on transportation construction related jobs, and the best thing that we can do for our economy is making sure that we have the infrastructure for the 21st century. And just some examples, um, we, we talk about congestion measures and ongoing maintenance. I've talked to Mr. Kempton, uh, and I appreciate Mr. Kempton's uh, patience, by the way, uh, in the conversations. And I've talked to Secretary Kelly. We all know the problems, but let's get our damn act together and actually move. And let's stop talking about it. And I don't mean to cuss, but it's extremely frustrating that we continue to sit here year after damn year. We don't do anything about this. And when does the talking stop? Um, so uh, a few items. Let's move forward on a bipartisan approach. Let's adopt Senator Huff's measure. Let's put transportation funds into a lockbox to ensure voters know that there is uh, going to be transparency in this issue, just like we've done with schools. Uh, if we look at vehicle miles traveled, let's continue to penalize rural counties. It's ridiculous. We need to be able to look at gas tax. If we move forward on the vehicle miles traveled tax, it penalizes rural California. Rural residents drive longer than urban residents. And it's not fair, but we don't have the courage to be able to have a tough conversation about gas tax. When does that stop? And when do we get a backbone to actually move this forward? Uh, and then finally, I, I like Senator Bell's bill. Let's move it uh, and stop the talking. We know where the problems are at. We know where the cities are at. And I'm very grateful, by the way, to the League of Cities and all of their work. Uh, and Ms. Valentine, been honored to be able to work with you. Uh, Mr. Dunn has been amazing uh, to be able to work with on self-help counties. Mr. Higgins, we haven't had as much opportunity to be able to work together, but thank you very much for your advocacy. But I, I'm just here to say I feel frustrated. I think we all feel frustrated. We can continue to talk to our blue in the dang face, or we can actually do something and follow through with the commitment to the commuters of this state. Okay, obviously this is something that's an issue for me, uh, and I'll stop talking. But uh, I, I think the bottom line is, let's work as a bipartisan body to be able to get a solution in 2016 and prove that we can do this to the voters. Okay, I didn't hear a question there, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I wanted to thank, thank the panels for coming. Uh, you know, you know um, as long as I've worked on these things, I always looked at um, a distinction between um, road maintenance and repair, and this sort of gets to Senator Ross' issue. I always look at road maintenance, repair, and safety kinds of projects uh, in terms of financing those uh, a little bit maybe distinct from capital improvement STIP type projects. And what I mean by that is um, the user fees that we have, which are the, basically the gas tax uh, as, a, as a tax on the people that use the roads, has always been considered to be the main source of funding for road repair and maintenance kinds of activities. That is no longer the case. It's more and more half-cent sales tax, a little grant here, a little, you know, other funds from various other places, um, uh, developer fees, right? For I didn't ask that question, but more and more fees on development, uh, new development, uh, it gets tax and tax, and a lot of that money is more and more going to road maintenance, repair, safety projects, uh, the, the city and county general funds, more and more money that gets taken away from the police and fire basic uh, service. So, and it's all because the original concept of a user fee um, 
has not been dealt with since the early 90s. I mean, that's the facts. I mean, we haven't really touched the subject for 25 years. So unless we want to keep using general fund, uh, little funds here and there, half cent sales taxes, and more and more of those funds to be basically doing roads maintenance, um, unless if that's the direction, fine. But unless we want to continue that, I think, I think we're left with trying to adjust the user fees appropriately to maintain the roads in a respectable manner and a safe manner to prevent accidents, injuries, deaths, all those kinds of things. This is real, this is real. People have been killed, you know, because of inaccurately maintained conditions in our community. And let alone the emergency responses, disasters, all those kinds of things that happen. So I think what I look for in terms of maintenance is a little bit different than new construction. Maintenance should be an ongoing, steady fund that allows you to plan ahead in a long way to do life cycle cost maintenance, to do the most efficient maintenance cycle you can for your community, and not have to constantly play catch up, catch up, catch up. Uh, and I think if you had an ongoing cycle of maintenance, it's much cheaper for the taxpayer and better for the taxpayer if you have that kind of maintenance uh, program. But if you have to every year fill the gap somehow and not fund it adequately, then it's, you fall further and further behind and you, you tend to have to, in the long range, spend more and more tax dollars. So I've always looked at it this way, and it's really true. If you don't fix it now and you wanna fix it later, it's just gonna cost more money in terms of road maintenance and repair and safety projects. And, and I always believe that. So I think, I think we ought to look at that a little differently than we look at new construction uh, that are mainly now funded with the half cent sales tax in those 20 counties. And I'd like to see more counties um, um, pass half cent sales tax. We did have in the original local government, local state governor partnership program was established in the 90s by some severe lobbying by some hard-headed people from the League of Cities and California Association of Counties uh, to get the local state partnership program put into effect the last time the gas tax was increased. And I happened to be the local city council member that chaired the transportation committee for the League of Cities. And we, we insisted, I was, I was the hard-headed guy. Yeah, you can see the, 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 where, where I was banged around here by several <laughs> people. But um, we did fight very, very hard for that local state partnership. And that was to incentivize local governments and counties to do the half cent sales tax. And it did work because it, during that period of time is when the biggest new expansion of half cent sales tax occurred in the state of California after we created that local state partnership program. So I think, I think uh, in answer to Senator Roth's question, uh, user, users, you know, users should pay for the roads they use. And I agree with Senator McGuire, uh, Senator Huff's bill was approved in this committee. We, I am fully committed to putting a lockbox saying that if any increase in funding occurs, the money shall be spent for road maintenance, repair, and safety projects. That has to happen because then we deal with the issue of just passing taxes and not knowing where the money's spent. Now we can say, hey, this is where the money's gonna be spent. So it's, uh, we got such a big backlog, we gotta spend it on this. And we can't be taking and borrowing it and taking it from, other, from that pot of money and, and spending it on other things. So I think that's, uh, that's I totally agree with you on that. So um, I wanna thank the panel. We'll call um, at this time, um, we'll call our um, California Transportation Commission. Uh, we have, 
We're honored to have the vice chair here. Um, Bob Alvarado is our state transportation commissioner. Bob, thanks for coming up to give us your advice. And Will Kempton, executive director of the commission. So thank the two of you for coming. proceed with the commission's presentation. Uh, good afternoon, Chairman Bell and committee members. Uh, thank you uh, for inviting us to participate in today's hearing. We appreciate the opportunity to tell you about the recent action the commission took related to the fund estimate for the 2016 State Transportation Improvement Program, or STIP. As you know, statute requires a commission to make a reasonable estimate of funds expected to be available for the five-year STIP which is then updated every two years. Recent projections of a continuing downturn in anticipated gas tax revenues required the commission to adjust the amount of funding expected to be available for the, ninth, for the 2016 STIP. At a January meeting, the commission adopted a revised fund estimate, and that results in $754 million less than is needed to fund already programmed transportation projects. This means that in addition to no new projects for the next five years, projects already included in the previous STIP programs will have, be, have to be delayed or deleted. The effect of this reduction on the state's transportation system will be nothing short of catastrophic. However, it would be fiscally irresponsible of us to program projects that we expect we don't have the money uh, to fund them. Executive Director Kempton is here to discuss the details of how the commission was put in this position and afterwards, we'll be happy to answer uh, any questions. 